Gentlemen, I love this AE1500, but it is infuriating, okay? Because look how big and beautiful this LCD display is on this Casio watch, right? Well, for so long I suffered with this, this difficult to read G-Shock watch. Tiny numbers, like you can barely see them, right? It's easier to see the reflection of my camera than it is to see the numbers on this watch. And it led me to believe that, well, Casio, they just can't make easy to read screens. And then I walk into Walmart and look how big, beautiful, and easy to read this screen is. It's infuriating, right? And on top of that, it fits, it fits well. Look, I'm on, I'm on notch one, two, three, four, five. This has an extended wristband. I was led to believe that, you know, Casio, they can't make extended wristbands because, you know, look at this one. This is a Pro Trek. Like, I have to wear it on, like, the very last notch, right? And it's the same thing with uh, the, the square that my son Phil has now, the uh, GW5610 or the DW5610. Anyways, this watch is fantastic. Uh... I really, I really think that this is this is the best of all the cheap Casio watches, and I've tried on several of them, two of which have extended wristbands. This and another one, I forget the the model number. Steve took it, and Steve took my other El Cheapo uh, Casio watch, uh, the MRW two hundred. So I only have this El Cheapo one to compare it to, and this one I wore in the oil field for over a year and the band started to break so there are some drawbacks to the cheap casio watches but this one has got to be one of the best and by the way in terms of tough test because this is a beater watch vlog i i rate and review beater watches and i test them out at work and i work in the oil field and uh sunday night i had to go out to a coil tubing job and i found my watch brother will Will is wearing the same thing, AE1500. And look how look at all the battle scars on this one. This one has been beaten up. And, you know, Will's on coil tubing. You know, he's a, he, he can do everything on a coil tubing crew. And so coil tubing is one of those oil field jobs. You're going to get really dirty, and your watch is going to get banged up. And this thing has a dickens scratched out of it. You can't even read... You know the letters around around the uh, perimeter but it's still functioning right and Will's had this for some time this is a battle proven watch okay so you know lately I've been tough testing the Mudmaster and uh, you know I, I don't even think that I need to do the same test on the AE 1500 because here's a proof right here that this that this watch is a durable watch and it's only twenty dollars let's just call it twenty two dollars you can see on my unboxing video you know exactly how much i paid for it i think it was like twenty one dollars and change bought at walmart in dumas texas and so the uh the mudmaster this one's three hundred and eighty dollars retail okay so i'm gonna make a comparison video but you can see they are very similar and the weird thing being that the AE 1500 came out first. So I'll go, I'll go into more into detail comparing these two. But I'll just say that it's, it's really frustrating to see Casio make such a beautiful display that's easy to read. And, and to wonder, you know, why can't they do it on G-Shocks? And we'll, we'll go into that more in the upcoming video where I compare these two. But today... I'm just reviewing the AE 1500, and like I said, I love it. I'm giving it five stars, okay? Because when you rate a watch, you have to take into account the cost. So there are some drawbacks, but for $22, I'll, I'll live with them, okay? So first off, uh, the good thing is I've already gone over the, the display and the strap. If you are a big wrister, this is probably the best budget watch for a big wrister, okay? And... Uh, we'll just take it off and I'll show you the second or the, the problem is that it kind of leaves an imprint okay 
This watch band is not the most comfortable. They have these notches here that are meant to grab the keeper. So the, the band is long, but when it's on your wrist and you know you have this keeper here, the keeper is not going to walk down on you because these bumps help hold the, hold the keeper. Like the keeper will wedge itself into these bumps. But the bumps are, I don't know, they're kind of sharp, okay? So the most comfortable watch I own by far is the DWH5600. And this is a really soft plastic. Uh, it has an organic texture on the bottom, great sweat management. And this one, it takes some getting used to, okay? Right off the bat after wearing this watch and then putting the AE1500 on, a little scratchy, okay? But, you know, you can deal with it for $22, okay? And I tested the buttons while wearing work gloves, impact work gloves, and you can press the buttons really easily, which is another good thing. But it's also a problem because you can accidentally press the buttons. And which, you know, isn't, isn't such a big deal. Like you look down and you're like, oh, I'm in stopwatch mode instead of regular time. But it can be a problem because because like the only way to tell the modes apart are these little, little letters. And so you could accidentally read the wrong time if you press these buttons. But these bumps along the side do protect the buttons from, from being incidentally pressed to, you know, leading to unwanted presses. Uh, you know, that's the purpose of the buttons on the side. And that's what they do on other G-Shocks. You know, that's why these bumps along the perimeter help protect these buttons from being pressed accidentally. Okay. But it is pop possible on this watch. I don't know how much it bothers you. But the big selling point to this watch is the huge numbers. And it's always bugged me why, why Casio has such tiny numbers on the G-Shocks. And this goes all the way back to, you know, like the 80s and 90s. That back in the day, in the 80s and 90s and even the early 2000s, I would always get Timex watches. Because Timex watches had bigger displays that were clearer, easier to read, bigger numbers. And so the AE1500 just has this amazing, easy to read screen. Now, one negative about the screen, oh, I think I just accidentally pressed the button. I don't know if any of you guys know. All right, guys, I'm back. This, this dumb camera died again, the Sony ZV-1F. It's another video ruined by this camera okay so expect an upcoming rant video about this camera i'm going to rate it poorly anyways i want to get a little bit more in about this watch uh the ae 1500 for this review before the camera dies again all right while this camera was charging just now i did my daily devotional in the jim kincaid study bible and when this camera dies again i'll, I'll go to the gym and when i come back hopefully it'll be fully charged but anyways you got a little bit of time before it dies again and I just want to say that there's actually some some advantages in the module to the AE1500 over some of these new really expensive semi smart watches particularly the uh, DW the GBDH2000 and the D DWH5600 Okay, this is the DWH5600. I think I misidentified the GBDH2000 earlier in this video. But anyways, these watches have a, have a problem, and it's really stupid. But when you, when you go... Let me take this out of power saving mode. I keep it in power saving mode when it's in this bag because I don't, I don't wear the GBDH2000 uh, on days when I'm working. I only wear it to the gym and on my days off. But anyways, let's go down to uh, the timer. Okay. And I have it set for 24 minutes, but if you're going to set the, uh, set, set this watch, it only goes up to 
60 minutes and you have to you can't hold down this button see how i'm holding down the forward button you and it only went pressed it one it, i pressed it i long pressed it and it only advanced one minute see when i let go it advanced it one minute okay when you set the timer or any parameter on this watch let's go to the timer and i'm going to hold down the adjust button as to set it Is this even the timer? This may not be the timer. Stopwatch. Alarm. Timer. I guess the timer's running. So let me stop it. Yeah, it was running for 24. 24 minutes is the maximum that you can set this timer. However, when you set it, it's easier to set. Because if you hold down this adjust button, the blinking indicates we're setting the time. Oops. So mode will, will change... Uh, the minutes or, or the seconds. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. This is hours, 24 hours. So the, the information I just relayed to you is totally incorrect. You can go, this can go up to 24 hours. Okay. The AE 1500, you can set the timer for 24 hours. The GBD H 2000, you can only set it for a maximum of 60 minutes. And to set those 60 minutes, you have to press this button repeatedly to advance one minute per press. Okay, 60 minutes. Boom, back to zero minutes. This one, this is, this is set for one hour. This timer is set for one hour, okay? So I hit adjust to get out of it. All right, and... Let me get my uh, my pen to point where to go. Here it is. My pointing pen. This is the Zebra uh, F701. Expect a review upcoming. Okay, so hours, minutes, seconds, right? Let's get this started. It's chugging down, okay? And setting this time... All right, let me set it. So I want to advance these hours. Easy. Hold down this button. And I'm just blasting through the hours by holding down the button all the way up to 24 hours. So that's it's actually an advantage that this older AE1500 has over these newfangled watches designed in the 21st century, you know, and less capable than a good old-fashioned regular Casio watch. That's, that's, that's what's infuriating. Casio knows how to make a timer that exceeds 60 minutes, but these two watches cannot do that. GBDH2000, the DWH5600. It's like a step back. Really annoying. But anyways, so this is the stopwatch. And... Uh, Actually, I should find out how, how high up the stopwatch goes and compares it to the in comparison to the uh, GBDH 2000. Uh, I've had it rolling for a long time, and you also have a second time zone, so you'd actually have to set the time for the second time zone. I, I believe it shares the seconds with the main clock, and you have to set the time for the second time zone. Uh, so you can, if you like, say I'm in Texas, I have the main time set for Texas, and then I wanted to have DT be New Mexico time. Well, I just set it one hour uh, back. You know, this watch GBH2000 does have an advantage over uh, uh, this cheaper watch because the time zones. This one has a GPS, so it sets time via the GPS. And the time zones are already uh, programmed into the watch. So you can uh, just go to world time and, you know, of course, just change. This, so this is set for Denver, which is New Mexico time. All right. So anyways, 
obviously you have to set this watch yourself it doesn't automatically adjust the time and you have to set the secondary time zone but it does have a secondary time zone okay so the main screen clearly displays the time the day of the week the date all right and the, it has an hourly chime some of these newer casio watches do not have an hourly chime okay the mudman does have an hourly chime all right but uh that's a cool thing i know a lot of uh casio fans love that hourly chime and you can set five different alarms and when you have the alarm set there's notches along the perimeter uh letting you know that alarm one is on alarm two is on alar alarm three is on and this there's a total of five alarms so you go to alarms this is alarm three set for five minutes to midnight reminding me that i have to go and take a strap on the tanks if i'm pulling a night shift the alarm is not loud enough to wake you up from sleeping so if i'm sleeping at 11 55 p.m these alarm the uh, the watches these watch alarms none of them really can wake you up no vibration on this watch but let's let's go to uh alarm i haven't set alarm four so it's at midnight you just hold adjust and you could advance the uh number so this alarm four is now on and it's set for 1 a.m all right and you and you can also set it for a particular date all right so if you only wanted the alarm to sound on a particular date like on january 1st 1 a.m you know to remind you uh stay off the road it's it's 1 a.m on new year's it's amateur hour and everybody's drunk driving getting into an accident just stay home that's what this alarm's for and so there we go we went through the functions and it's basic but it's that that's all you you know you really need right and so there's one other little flourish here on the main screen which is uh like you know that that game that used to have on old nokia phones where that worm goes and eats all the little or that maybe it was a snake kind of looks like that there's a, some notches that move across the perimeter for what is that like 10 seconds so it takes 10 seconds to fill up and then 10 seconds to go away so a little animation but it's unobtrusive some g-shock watches have like way too many of these little animations i find it to be kind of annoying i never i never got g-shocks because i thought that a lot of those little animations are dumb but this one's out of the way you can ignore it if you want to okay and there's a light it's just base two basic leds to illuminate the whole screen and uh but the low light capabilities of this watch is is terrific because an lcd the bottom layer is a mirror okay so you can see that as i'm holding this watch and pointing it towards the window you can see that the mirror catches a lot of light and so at nighttime there may only be like a, a a distant source of light like a light plant on the other side of of the uh location you're working on at night and this this watch can catch it and and there's so much contrast between the numbers and the background and also the numbers are big that you can easily read the watch in low light conditions okay so i drive a truck and i'll just you know have the my hand on the steering wheel my watch here i don't even need to like turn this watch around or press the light button if i was driving a truck and i wanted to see the time you know headlights from other vehicles or street lights any sort of dim light even the lights from the dash you catch it just right you can read the watch and i really like that okay that's this was the watch i had before i got the g-shock and this one's the same way obviously smaller but this one's easy to read in low light conditions okay my next watch was my first g-shock which is like really difficult to read and i made a lot of rant videos about how this 180 dollar watch the size of a hockey puck was difficult to read and it is right so 
uh, the, let me find it again. I lost it in my watch pile. Oh, here it is. The AE 1500. I give it five stars. Okay. So $22. You, you can't go wrong. All right. And, and I'll make a comparison video with a mud man. All right. An upcoming video. And you, so stay tuned for that one. But if you can't afford all these expensive watches that Casio is coming out with, like this $400 watch, or this one I think is like, nope, wrong one. This one, I, I can't remember how much this one cost. Like $300 or something. And this one's $380. All those are a lot of money. But this one's $22, and I'd say that's that's a good deal okay if you if this is all you can afford you're getting a good watch here there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed about and as far as durability goes like i don't think that these pins are 100 percent. you know my tirade about beater watches for work it's not the impacts or uh that that really kill a watch it's the pins the pins when they pop off you lose your watch that's it so I'm not 100% confident in these pins, all right? But I do think the pins are more durable than the MRW200, and the pins are more, way more durable than the Casio calculator watch. I've lost so many cal Casio calculator watches. All right, so the, this material is more flexible. This is another cheap Casio, okay? So these pins are pretty solid on this one. This one's proven. At work you can see how scratched up it is and then this one I'd say I'd say it's still pretty durable <clears throat> uh, maybe maybe a little less than this one but definitely more than the MRW 200 but anyways I think that this uh, I think that this uh, camera's about to die so let me just remind you that this is the AE-1500 is battle-proven. I mean, Will showed me that in, in the short... You can watch this short video on the YouTube Shorts where, where, I, where we hold the two watches up. But AE-1500, $22, five stars. But it's so infuriating that Casio can't make more watches like this that are easier to read. I'm Jim Kincaid. Thanks for watching.